Hi, and welcome back to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to take a look at making a change to an existing toolpath and then finalizing our toolpaths by making a repetition of toolpath. First thing I want to do is I want to modify my Swarf machining. I'm going to double left click on it to get into editing it. I'm going to come up here to my settings. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my stock to leave on the floor to be zero because this is meant to be a finishing toolpath, stock to leave on the wall as well. I'm also going to set my maximum depth of cut to be an eighth of an inch. Lastly, I'm going to come to my material height, and here I'm going to specify my material height, and that's the, the depth from here to here, basically. And I'm going to set this at 0.3. Green check mark. Now I'm taking multiple passes, and life is good. Now, the last step here is we want to define, and I'm going to turn on my machine so I can see everything more clearly, we want to define the fact that there is a bunch of these blades that the inside needs to be finished and the walls need to be finished, right? To help make things a little bit easier on the eyes, I'm going to first go to the Entities tree. I'm going to hit this button to minimize everything. I'm going to go over to my Sketches again, maximize that, and this is my Sketch for Swarf, so I'm going to go and edit this to say Sketch for Swarf. This way, again, I know what it is. I'm going to go to my Shapes here. Expand that, and let's see, this is that surface. I'm going to say this is surface for Swarf. Okay, I'm going to uncheck that as well, just so again we can hide things, make things a little bit easier visually. Now we're going to come back to NC Operations. And from here, I'm going to go ahead, select this operation, right mouse button click, and I'm going to come on down to Repetition and I'm going to repeat it. Now I could control select both or I could add this one as well to it, why not? But I want to do this just one at a time just to show you how it works. And here I'm going to choose my pattern. I'm going to go circular about the z-axis, that's correct. And now we need a quantity. Now if your part comes from top solid and this part I designed in top solid, maybe we can cheat. Maybe I can come here and I can borrow the repetition from the design. And notice, just by hovering on here, it's showing me the repetition of my design. And I can preview all of those there. Now again, this requires that this part was designed in top solid. If it was, great, green check mark, and away you go. Let's go ahead and do it. Now we're going to go here, we're going to let it recalculate once. And now it's adding all of those tool paths for the bottom inside between each fan blade. Now we're going to do the repetition again. We can mouse over all these. You can see they're all there. Okay. Let's minimize this a little bit. So we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you pay attention, <laughs> there they are, the quantities. So there's 20, including the original. Now we want to do the same thing with this toolpath, but we'll set up the repetition a bit more manually. So this time, let's again right click, go to repetition. This time it's the Swarf machining. This time I'm going to set up the operation manually about our z-axis of our for rotation. Total angle, 360 degrees. Total, including the original, is 20. If you want to visualize this better, you can say, let's start this right here and then it'll show you a preview of everything in position. And this is just showing us that we have the right quantity selected. Example, if I said this was 17, that doesn't look right anymore, does it? So we want this to be 20. Green check mark, green check mark, and like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and regenerate. And we have now duplicated all of our five axis tool path. And this part is now 100% machined. I hope you found this video tutorial to be useful. Check back soon for more in-depth looks at Top Solid.